Hey guys, what's up? By Zach Detron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next video, and this is a defensive video talking about how to defend against miners uh, at Town Hall 10 and at this point in the game. So this is obviously for Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10 attacks. If you're getting hit by a Town Hall 11, you know you can do your best on your base, but the odds are you're going to get uh, chewed up pretty badly. That's just the reality of the the game right now, uh, because a Town Hall 10 dipping down on a Town Hall 9 shouldn't be close. Um, and nor should a Town Hall 11 on a Town Hall 10. So that being said, today is a Town Hall 10 defensive video, and miners are so powerful, I think it's important that we discuss how to defend against them. I've done this for Valks, I think. I've done this for Dragons at Town Hall 9 uh, a while back. Now I want to do another specific how to defend against troop video, and like I said, today we're talking about miners. So first of all, yes, this is the base from the last live base build video. You guys might remember that uh, if you go back like three or four videos, I did a, a live base build and this is what I ended up building, but I didn't get a chance to emphasize exactly some of the the, the great aspects of this base. Um, I might've made a few adjustments, I'm not sure um, if I did or not, but either way, this is a great base to defend against miners. And I wanna talk specifically about why and kinda go broader about the basic mechanics you want um, in your base, the basic aspects of it that will be essential for defending against miners. So we will get right into the action, guys. Um, I'm just gonna kinda go through each each point I have um, written down here. The first thing is the core of the base. That's huge because you want the core to be something as unfriendly to miners as possible. And I have what's called a split core or a duo core um, where the core is kinda two compartments that are divided by that line in the middle and some things you want in your core are you want wizard towers because the core of the base is the place where the miners are most likely to be in big groups. So you want your splash damage uh, to be able to affect those groups. So you notice um, we have the the wizard towers, um, which are splash damage. We have the giant bombs. We'll talk a little bit about those in a moment. We also have the small bombs, which people use for wall breakers, but uh, it doesn't kill a max wall breaker. And also, uh, that extra damage is significant to a miner that doesn't have a ton of health at level two, especially. So uh, I'd put those small bombs in the core as well. They work out well. Um, the skelly traps, those are huge because the miners go through those one at a time. So they can distract the miners for maybe three, four seconds and keep them above ground. That's huge, um, so they can be targeted by defenses. Notice the infernos, there's a small inferno compartment. They're not set back like two tiles away like they would be there. They're back against the wall. Um, now bowlers can reach them, but realistically there's no reason bowlers will be inside these compartments having the opportunity to target your infernos. So there's no reason to be too worried about that. We don't see mass bowler at Town Hall 10 at all really, um, so that's not an issue. Uh, but by having them against the wall here, they can <clears throat> target pretty much everything in the core. And because of that, uh, they're not going to be getting the heal benefit, the miners. That's another bonus because the heals are very strong on miners. So you can take away that element of it. So yeah, um, as far as the core goes in the location and the compartments around it, one thing that I think I might have touched on in uh, the the base build video, but I think I want to stress even more and kind of connect that to the bigger picture, is having your your core not accessible by a queen walk. Because some bases are deep in the compartments, they'll let your queen just walk you know, up to the core and start to take out buildings in the core. You don't want the queen eliminating giant bomb spots. So if you look at this base the way it's built, you can see that the skinny compartments on the outside do not allow access to the core for the queen. She's not gonna be taking out these wizard towers, um, the clan castle, the storage. Those she cannot reach for the most part um, from these outer compartments. And because of that, as the miners make their way through the base, um, they're they're not gonna they're gonna have to deal with those giant bombs. They're gonna have to go th through the core because it will still be up. Now, granted, that's if it's a queen walk attack, which is common for miners. A queen walk miner attack is very common. Um, it might be different if, if they bring a kill squad, but still, uh, realistically, it's they're not going to be able to get to the core and take much of it out. Even if they bring, you know, bowlers, for example, um, they bring their heroes, a golem, some bowlers, maybe a rage and a jump. Even if they make that investment, they're still not going to get to the core. And even if they do, they won't take out much of it. And also because it's a split core, 
if they do invest a lot of troops, which is possible to get in there and take out part of the core, they can only usually take out one side of it. So if they take out this right side, you still have the left side, which has a full set of giant bombs. So uh, that's kind of the worst case scenario. But usually, if you're lucky, all five of these giant bombs will still be up uh, doing damage to the miners as they make their way through. So, okay, that being said, I want to talk a little bit more about the Infernos and the compartments. The Inferno compartments, notice they do have the two tile buffer towards the outside. That's a good um, safety mechanism for bowlers because people still do use bowler kill squads in addition to queen walks to take out a small sh section of the base before they send their miners in. So you want that preventative uh, buffer area on at least one side of the Inferno Tower. So that helps. You can see I have some Teslas on this side, just as a, just as a surprise really. And one thing that is really important for defending against miners is knowing that the Inferno Tower is only as good as the defenses around it. So that's basically, that, that means that the Inferno blocks the heal effect, but that's pretty much it. It really doesn't do much damage, especially my level one Infernos. If you have level three Infernos, they will do more damage, obviously. But regardless of the level, for the most part, you need defenses like Wizard Towers, just regular point defense, and these Teslas, obviously. You need those defenses around your Infernos. So while the miners are in that critical area where they can't be healed, and maybe they're above ground for certain periods of time, uh, they'll be taking damage from the other defenses not just the Infernos, because sometimes people have the Infernos in ridiculously big compartments, which really doesn't do much for miners, because the miners, yeah, they won't be able to get the heal effect, uh, five of them at least, but they won't be taking much damage either. So you want those Infernos in somewhat reasonable sized compartments uh, where there's other defenses they can help out. So talking about giant bombs for a second, I did touch on it a little bit earlier. They're kind of split into two different groups here. And this is not the best example, to be completely honest, but you want that opportunity for a double giant bomb set because I believe a max set of double giant bombs is very, very close to taking out a full health miner. Um, now, if that miner is, you know, only at 80% health, that should be enough to take it out, especially with those wizard towers and all the other defenses around it. So if you can get it so where the giant bombs trigger at the same time, that's a huge asset for your base. Now that is hard to do, but think about it like hogs. I mean, miners are like hogs, except they target every base. So when you build a double giant bomb set for hogs, you just put the giant bombs between two defenses where the hogs will most likely uh, travel from one defense to the other and travel over both giant bombs. The same thing is kind of true for, for miners. Um, you can't be as accurate and it's a little bit trickier to do, but you could adjust the base so that maybe um, at a given point in time, if this was farther back and if this air defense was farther back this way, so that you kind of make um, a little bit of a, a mini double giant bomb set, kind of, if you guys can kind of visualize that, where they go from the Inferno to the Wizard Tower, or that's kind of hard because there's a wall in the way. But if this clan castle was over here, um, they could go from the Wizard Tower over to where the clan castle would be with the giant bombs kind of in the middle between that, if you can kind of visualize that. Um, I might go more in depth in a later video, but basically um, the point is you want to have that opportunity or the possibility, I should say, of having both giant bomb sets triggered at once. Uh, that's that's going to be huge and you can get lucky almost and have a lot of miners die at once. So look to do that. Um, I want to talk just briefly about seeking air mines, which might not th seem that important, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, we've seen that uh, queen walks are still very common with minor attacks, and because of that, you got to get bold with your seeking air mines. You can't put them, you know, right next to your air defense. I have talked in the past about how the La Loon, uh, like the uh, what do you call it, the bowler, what bowl La Loon or whatever. I have I made a video about that at Town Hall 10. I thought it might be pretty powerful. It really hasn't fanned out into much, it's still being used very occasionally on the right bases. But as long as your air defenses are kind of in this rectangle formation, uh, there's not a whole lot to worry about with an air attack. And the much more pressing issue is miners. Because of that, put those seeking air mines farther out. If you're lucky, you'll take out a healer. So if there's certain areas on your base where you think, you know, they might try a queen walk from here, 
Um, and that can be based on experimentation if people try that in friendly challenge or in kind of a war that's not as important. Um, if you can decide where the queen walk is most likely to come from, you can put one, even two seeking ermines in that area. Now don't put them right next to each other because they'll target the same healer. So keep them a little bit spread out from each other so they target two different healers. Um, and, and put those over there to, to really weaken the queen walk because when she has one, two less healers, that's really going to make it uh, a tough a tough thing to overcome for the attacker. So look to do that. Be a little bit bold. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices for uh, strategies that aren't as viable to defend against uh, the more popular strategies that you're more likely to see at Town Hall 10. So, okay, that covers Seeking Air Mines. One final thing I want to talk about, and this is something I just, you know, recently have been thinking about, and I think it can make a pretty significant distance or difference, not distance, difference, is the CC troops you use. And I think this isn't probably the most qualified opinion. I haven't tested this out a whole lot. I've seen it occasionally, but I think you should use a golem in your CC. And I don't know, maybe a balloon for the other five troop space. It probably doesn't matter. But you should use a golem in your clan castle, and I'll tell you why. On a minor attack, there's a few different things that could happen. It's a possibility the miners themselves could deal with the golem, in which case that's awesome because, first of all, the golem has so many hit points, they'll take the miners a little bit to actually, you know, take out the golem, plus take out the golemites. That'll keep them above ground for a significant amount of time while they'll be taking damage, and if they're under the... Uh, if they're under an Inferno Tower, they won't be able to get healed back up, at least five of them, or maybe even ten of them if they're under both Infernos. Also... And also, the, I should mention, the Golem, when it explodes, does a ton of damage, uh, more than you might think. So it can take out um, a good deal of health. I think even more than half the health of a Miner is taken away from a Golem exploding. It's a pretty significant number. I don't know the exact number. I'm sure it's out there. You can look it up, look up the health of a Miner, calculate that. But I think it's, you know, two-thirds in that in that realm, around, around two-thirds of the Miner's health. Don't quote me on that, but that's kind of what I... The, the impression I'm under. So a golem works well in that way. Now, most of the time, the people who attack you don't have their, their miners deal with the CC troops, especially if there's air troops, the miners can't do anything about it. So they have their queen on a queen walk do it if they're doing a queen walk. But the golem will take up a lot of time from a queen walk. Um, it takes the queen you know, a, a significant amount of time to beat through that golem, especially if she's not under rage or her ability. Plus the golemites, it just delays things, and time is always a big factor in minor attacks, especially queen walk minor attacks, because you have that extra amount of time being used for a queen walk. So if you can use your... Um, if you can use that golem to your advantage, it can soak up a lot of time uh, from the attacker and really press them to send their miners in maybe prematurely before the queen has taken out enough of the base. So look to do that also. Now the third possibility is they come in with a kill squad uh, with bowlers, the king, the queen, but typically people don't bring a big enough kill squad to be able to just eat right through that golem right away. So even if they do bring a number of bowlers, the king, the queen, it'll still delay for a, you know, a period of time, uh, which is probably better than like a baby dragon Valks and stuff. It'll probably delay them longer. It won't do as much damage besides when it explodes. If you're lucky, it might take out a few bowlers or something, but it'll at least slow things down. And people aren't bringing huge kill squads because they know that with miners, you have to have 25, 30 miners in order to be able to go through a base at a, at a fast rate, which is the best the most optimal uh, way to do it. So people will usually be investing most of their troop space in miners. Therefore, they'll have smaller kill squads and you'll have, uh, they'll be able to, your golem will delay them longer because there won't be as much damage because there's not as many troops in their kill squad. Okay, there we go. I think that made sense. So yeah, that's it for the CC troops. I would try it out maybe in friendly challenge, see how it works. Just my own personal advice there. So yeah, hope this video helped. Kind of a short one. Didn't have a whole lot of stuff to illustrate my points, but this is the base. I'll go into photo mode real quick. Um, I have it on Spanish just for fun because uh, I'm an AP Spanish this year. But yeah, this is the base. Uh, you can see the layout of it if you want to look more into that, how it's built, possibly use a version of it in your own war. Worked pretty well, as you guys probably saw if you watched the last uh, duo of live base build plus friendly challenge uh, series video if you watched that for the last Town Hall 10 base I did. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked this video. Hope it wasn't too boring for you guys. Hope you learned something. Not the most exciting videos when I just show a base and kind of talk for most of the time, but 
<clears throat> it kind of is a nice change of pace from showing attacks and stuff. So this weekend, I'm hoping to record some live action, um, some of other people's live attacks uh, when I have some time because we should be in a pretty good war. Uh, no no guarantee, but I think we might be able to, to get some good attacks shown. And I'm also in the war myself, so maybe one of my own attacks or two will also be shown. We'll see how it goes. So stay tuned for that this weekend. Should have some cool videos coming out. Thank you guys so much for the support recently, watching the videos. Really appreciate it. The, the channel's been doing great lately. So a big shout out to all you guys who are watching this video. But yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next video, probably tomorrow. Bye, Sectatron out.